Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Peter Sicile. Doing transfer from master's to PhD. How do you go about it? Stay tuned. Don't touch that dial. okay welcome to my channel my name is peter as i said before i'm a phd student at university of Alberta. so in this channel we we'll talk about you know coming to school in canada graduate school you know some of the you know things that happen daily in graduate school that can kind of help you in your journey so i'm a second year phd student at the university of Alberta. i'm in the department of human um, division of human nutrition okay so you are doing your master's and then after one year of doing your master's program you decide to transfer to a phd you can't just wake up one day in the morning and say well i'm just going to transfer right so there are a lot of factors that are involved you know to determine if you are going to transfer or not number one thing is the type of project that you're working on you know um is it a project that can be extended for a long period of time you know number two thing is does your supervisor has funding for a phd student or is he or she willing to take in a phd student you know and the third thing is how interested really are you you know with are you really ready for the phd you know the, the rigors of phd so once you've clearly you know looked at all of those circumstances and you feel that they are is marked good for you then you can begin to think about the transfer so basically what transfer means is you do your masters and then after one year of your masters you decide to switch to phd so basically what it means is that you don't need to finish your masters you don't have to write a master's thesis at the end so okay there are scenarios where in the same lab some students complete their masters write their thesis and they start their phd right away so this one is let's say you are in the first year of your masters or let's say a year and a half and you you've met some of those things that i mentioned before and you feel you want to transfer you know so basically what you do is there is each university and each department they have their own way of operation and how things that work for them so basically you have to do uh, a presentation you know you prepare a presentation depends on how long they will give you guidance on how the presentation should be so you prepare your presentation and then you present to the examination committee so those examination committee will review you know your presentation and then if they are satisfied they can say okay you can transfer so basically you do you do your presentation and then they check what have you done as a master's student you know how productive have you been during the time of your master's you know of your master's and then they also look at you know how do you want to transition in terms of how long can you do this project for you know and then if you're really ready for that rigorous phd research so if they are satisfied that oh you have all of the correct you know experimental design you have your ob objectives hypothesis and everything all sorted out they can say okay this person can then become a phd so that moment even though you started as a master's you will now become a phd student so basically all of the work that you've done in that first year or a year and a half in your master's is like you've already done one year of phd you know, so you just need about three years of, of you know, um, a post transfer to finish the PhD. At the end, you'll be awarded uh, a PhD, right? So, you know, no master's degree for you, just have you know, a PhD. So, a lot of, you don't have to write a master's thesis. You don't have to worry about that. So, everything counts towards your, 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 your PhD. So, this is there are two scenarios or two sets of people that normally do this transfer number one let's say someone is coming from you know uh you're coming from uh, you, are, you are an international student and you already have a master's from your home country and you think of oh for, for me to get a phd it might be a little bit you know challenging getting a supervisor for a phd or getting the admission and then you apply for a master's position right depends on the project you apply for a master's position and then after one year especially since you already have a master's degree you know a lot of people will just transfer to phd you know and then another thing is people just 
they've not done their masters before they just start their masters first time masters and then after one year they transfer so you have to begin to think about this very early especially towards the ending of your first year because if you want to transfer you have to start having the conversation with your supervisor there are sometimes depends on how big the project is the supervisor or the professor can make that suggestion to you to say oh would you like to transfer to a phd you know i've seen some students that say oh i will gladly transfer i've seen some other students that will say oh i don't want to transfer i want to finish my masters first because they are not sure if after their masters they want to work or they want to go into a phd so some people take the time to finish up you know and then kind of decide if they want to uh, do the transfer but it's good to really start thinking about it on time such that you can try to be as productive as possible in that first year or year and a half so that when you now do your presentation and present to the committee you know they can say okay this person has been productive you know this past year as a master student we're also sure that this person will be able to also be productive where when uh, that person starts uh, the phd you know so that is basically how it works however you still have to write your you know your qualifying exam or your candidacy after you do your transfer you know some people one year after they transfer to phd you know some of them do their candidacy right so because it's kind of like a two-year you know starting point now so after one year they can do their candidacy or their qualifying exam you know and then when you pass that from phd student you become a um you become a uh, a phd candidate so think about it think about it plan very well plan very well especially when you are you know you already have a master's and you want to do a phd if you see a master's position you can also apply you know you can also apply and then even though the project that you are doing is a slightly different project that you want to do for phd you know you can do the there's a way you do the presentation and say okay these are this is what i've achieved for this is what i've done for my master's this is how it connects to the project that i want to do for my phd you know so you do the presentation and then if it is very convincing to the examiners and to your committee they will now approve your transfer you know this is especially true for people that are very sure that they want to do their phd you know why not just transfer if you know you actually want to do a phd right after your master because when you have your phd you know no one is really you know looking at your master's degree again i'm basically looking at the highest degree that you have so think about it and then start planning on time start planning on time that's the key word start planning on time and then you can also talk to your maybe some if there are students in your in your lab that have done a transfer before you can also talk to them you know see how they their transfer went you know how their exam went you know uh what preparations did they have to do and then so that they kind of get a little bit of insight as to you know um if kind of have insight as to how the transfer exam is going to be so that's that for now in terms of transferring from master i have a couple of friends that have actually done transfer from masters to phd so maybe one of these days i can also bring them to my channel to just have these conversations with them and for them to also share their own personal experience so that is it for that so if you are still confused if you have questions just leave it in the comment section i uh, will be able to I'll, I'll try to respond to the question you know if you have any specific question relating to this and even though it's you know something outside of what i'm saying and it's something relating to coming to canada and grad school you can drop the question in the comment section and if you enjoy this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that whenever new videos are released you'll be the first person to get notified of our videos and also like this video and then share with your friends who you think i need of, of information thank you and i will see you in the next video